Hi and welcome to this episode of Travel Mentory TV. This time I'm showing you my trip from Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic to New York's John F. Kennedy Airport. And I'm doing that trip with American Airlines and Business Class. Before we start at PUJ or Punta Cana International Airport, allow me to summarize the main facts about this flight. The trip takes roughly 4 hours from gate to gate and covers a distance of 1,558 miles. On this occasion, American Airlines used a Boeing 757-200. And this is the check-in area in Punta Cana and after security, my path leads me to the new VIP lounge at Terminal B. Keep in mind that it is not part of the business class ticket. Instead, I access it with my Priority Pass membership. The lounge you are about to see is the successor of the actually not so old old lounge, which was kind of small and usually very crowded. The new lounge comes with a unique feature, something that I don't think you can find anywhere else, but see for yourself. Actually, the boarding process didn't work as smoothly as it looks here. When I tried to get into the plane the first time, I had to follow a gentleman into a room where a uniformed officer performed another security check of all my baggage. While everything was handled very professionally and respectfully, the story had some implications for me because I boarded the plane as the last passenger. More on that later. For now, let's enjoy the cabin, which I only had to share with one other passenger. That means that despite the 2-2 configuration, I had direct aisle access. That's great news, isn't it? Even better was the crew that was in a very good mood and encouraged me to film as much as I wanted to. If you're watching, thank you so much. It was a pleasure flying with you. John F. Kennedy Airport. Our flying time today is going to be 3 hours and 32 minutes. Okay, as always, a first or business class flight starts with a pre-departure drink. And now the pushback is being done. If you're familiar with my videos, then you know what comes next, my usual taxi animation. So here at Punta Cana, our plane is parked at gate Bravo 23. From there, we taxi to runway 08. It has a length of 10,171 feet. Here you see the FBO terminal, which is not the same as the VIP terminal, just to be clear. That is located east of terminal A. Apparently, local flights also depart from here, but I haven't tried any yet, so that's only theoretical knowledge on my behalf. Anyway, before reaching the runway, let's focus on American Airlines security video that I know by heart now. Hello everyone, thank you for your attention. It's time to get you ready for takeoff. We know you have lots of choices, so thanks for choosing American. We're happy to be your airline. Okay, there's not much to see here, so let's jump straight to the runway.
Alright, so we are heading to the east, to the ocean, where you will see some of the hotels of Bavaro. Once we have gained some altitude, that will give us the opportunity to do some aerial sightseeing using my 3D animations to outline specific landmarks. If you have made it that far in this video, please consider subscribing, there's a ton of videos in production and along with sharing and liking, it's an easy and free way to support this channel. Please make sure you click on the bell icon as well, so you don't miss any new releases. A big nice thank you goes to the nearly 3000 people that have already decided to follow this channel. Thank you very much for your support. Alright, now we have several things here. First of all, a lot of largely untouched land. In the background we have the Laguna Bavaro and a few hotels at the coast. As you may have noticed, we changed our course to the north and we are getting closer and closer to our cruise altitude. Here I marked some of Bavaro's beachfront resorts. Let's jump back into the plane where the crew has served me the appetizer. I also got a hot towel. In business class or first class, that's a sure sign that lunch is about to be served, so let's put out the tray table, which is hidden in the compartment that separates the two seats. I was pleased to see that the meal was very light, or at least it appeared that way. It was exactly what I wanted at that moment. If I remember correctly, it was a cold lunch, but I really liked it regardless. Everything was of good quality and it was tasty. Well, here I'm struggling to get the dressing out of the package using one hand while holding the camera with the other, but hey, I'm a one-man show. The crew also checked back frequently and asked if I needed something else and refilled my glass of wine several times. So everything was perfect. And while waiting for the dessert, let's see what the internet options are. American Airlines offers several onboard internet plans. Unlike some other airlines that I have seen, they don't count megabytes, which is good. The connection itself worked flawlessly. And here comes the dessert, a little tartlet with some coffee. Again, there's nothing to complain about. The lavatory on those planes is pretty basic, so there's not much to say about it. Okay, back to the seat and to the entertainment options. As you can see, there is no built-in screen. Instead, the flight attendants hand out tablet computers on longer flights and you can place them right here. So I got a pair of headphones, but no tablet computer since it's a rather short flight. However, you can do what I did, which is using your own electronic device to connect it to the wireless onboard entertainment service. You can see how that worked out, the movie just wouldn't start whatever I did. Neither did the live TV. And Glenn Gould didn't get a chance to play Bach. I figured it may be because I started everything in the browser of my tablet, so I switched to the GoGo -Go app, but I wasn't lucky with that one either. Eventually I used my tablet to surf the internet, which worked just fine. On my search for knowledge and entertainment, I read the safety card and the magazines that American Airlines puts into the seat pocket. It didn't take me long to become tired, so I wanted to get some rest. How good that the seat can be converted into a fully flat bed. Let me demonstrate this function here. Since AA uses this plane on certain transatlantic routes, that's an important feature, although I will tell you that I'm not a fan of the 2-2 configuration or any layouts that don't come with direct aisle access. On this flight it wasn't that important since it was quite short and I was practically alone in the cabin, but on long haul routes I find it annoying to climb over other people. The end result looks like that. I would describe it as comfortable and you can definitely get some sleep here. I mean for a narrow body airliner there's plenty of space. And of course AA also provides a blanket that you can use. So overall my verdict is that I wouldn't say this is the best seat I have ever seen, but for a 3 or 4 hour flight it's still more than okay. In the meantime we have reached the border between New York and New Jersey. That gives us another chance to discover some places from above. And maybe some of my viewers can actually recognize their home, who knows. 
And here you can already see some of the boroughs of New York City, including Staten Island and Brooklyn. Far, far away there's the skyline of Lower Manhattan with the New World Trade Center. In the foreground we have a view of Coney Island that is famous for its amusement parks and the beach. And these are all neighborhoods of Brooklyn as well. At this very moment we are above Mill Basin, which is the place where TV host Jimmy Kimmel grew up. And here I also outlined Midtown Manhattan. If you look closely you can see the Empire State Building. We are approaching JFK, so it's time for the landing animation. At John F. Kennedy Airport we are going to land on runway 13 left. That runway has a length of 10,000 feet. Well, and as our flight is coming to an end, let me continue with the story that unfolded when I boarded the plane. So the additional security check resulted in my baggage not being loaded onto the aircraft. However, the people at American Airlines did everything they could. They put it just on another plane to Philadelphia and later that day I was reunited with my suitcase at my destination in Washington DC. And I really have to outline that because I had already thought that I would never see my stuff again. So thumbs up for American Airlines. Okay, we have landed at JFK and now we need to get to our gate and it's time for one more taxi animation. Gate number 5 at Terminal 8 will be our gate of arrival today. I marked it with a bluish rectangle here. Well, so that was my flight with American Airlines on the Boeing 757. Overall it was a great experience. The crew did an excellent job, the aircraft and the cabin were actually better than I expected on this route and for the first time I have seen a launch that has an outdoor pool overlooking the airport. All in all I liked this travel experience. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you would like to support this channel please make sure you subscribe and click on the bell icon. A like would be nice too and sharing helps this channel to extend its footprint. Thanks. I'm working on many videos right now and the next one will be about Air Canada's fantastic business class product on the Boeing 777 on my way from Toronto to Frankfurt. I hope I'll see you then, have a great day wherever you're watching.